Okay, to get started, I will be using about a pound and a half of pork meat. And this particular cut that I'm using is basically a boneless tenderloin. Now, to create the authentic chicharron filling, you wanna probably use like a pork belly uh, to get it nice and golden brown, and you want it to, to get kind of crispy. Um, I'm going to be using this cut of meat and it's not high in fat, so I'm gonna have to add a little bit of oil to kind of mimic the chicharron um, filling. I will be also using a half a bell pepper, one Roma tomato, a quarter of an onion, and some garlic. Okay, so here I have a preheated pan and you want a nice medium to medium high heat and you want it steady. You don't want it to burn your meat. So here I'm adding my extra fat. Like I told you in the beginning, this meat is boneless and pretty much lean. It does have some fat on it, but it's not enough to really create that crispy brown color that I'm looking for. So. Here I went ahead and just diced up the meat and I'm just gonna toss it into the hot pan and this is going to take a good 20 minutes but I, I wanna get a nice deep golden brown color on this meat because I'm going to try to create that chicharron filling. So here I'm adding a hefty pinch of kosher salt. You can most definitely add whatever seasoning that you like, or your sazon, as they say. Um, there are, you know, packages of seasoning, or you can toss in a bouillon to give it uh, a nice flavor, but I'm going to keep it simple, and I'm just using salt. So now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start moving the meat around to start browning all the sides, and again, be patient. This is going to be a long process because you want to get a nice, deep, rich, golden brown crisp on the outside of this meat. Okay, so now you can see a lot of the juices have evaporated and a lot of the fat has rendered out. So now I'm getting the color that I, I want. And you can let this go longer. I've seen it where the chicharron is like super crispy and I don't wanna use the word dried out. It's, it's just a really crispy exterior and it's brown on all sides. But I think this is pretty good for me. So here I've just placed it on a plate with a napkin just to kind of sop up any residual oil or fat. And I'm just gonna let it come to room temperature to make it easier to handle because next I'm gonna toss it in the food processor. Okay, so I have a really small food processor, so I'm gonna do this in batches, but here is my, my faux chicharrones or, you know, my pork meat, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm just gonna uh, toss in my chopped bell pepper Roma tomato, garlic, and onion, and I'll toss in some of the, the meat, the fried pork meat, and I'm just gonna, you know, grind it until it's almost paste-like. That's kind of what you want. And I'll just continue doing that until it's all done. Okay, so here is all of my pork meat, and now I'm adding mozzarella cheese. And this is a good melty cheese that goes well with your pork filling. And now I'm just gonna kind of squish it into the meat because the texture that you want your filling to be is almost paste-like. And I'll, I'll kind of give you an idea. Um, a good way to tell if your filling is ready is if you can form it into a ball. So just grab some of it and look. I'll show you here. And, and now I can shape it into a ball and it holds its shape. That's what you want. That's the type of texture you want your filling to be. Okay, on to the masa. Here I'll be using, um, I just want to show you the brand I'm using. I'm using Maseca. I have four cups of Maseca in a bowl, and I'll also be using two and a half teaspoons.
teaspoons of kosher salt. You can season however much salt you like. If you use table salt, I don't recommend using this amount. You want to use less or it'll be too salty. But um, this is a good place to start. So I'm just going to go ahead and give that a mix in. And then I will also be adding, little by little, um, three and a half to four cups of warm water. And you just kind of want to do it little by little because if you just dump it all in there, it might be a little wet. You want to give the maseca time to soak in that water, which is why I'm using warm water. So just work that water in there. And um, again, if it's four cups of maseca, three and a half to four cups of warm water. And you're just going to have to mix it in and feel it. But again, this is a good place to start. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish working in the water to the maseca, but I also, I want to show you, this is a water oil mixture. It's like a cup and a half of water to like a couple tablespoons of oil. And this is what I'll be dipping my hands in to be able to handle the masa uh, better. And here I wanted to show you the end results. And your, my masa is the consistency of Play-Doh is the best way that I could describe it. And I'm just kind of squishing it and see how it kind of squishes through my hands. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I prepare the pupusas. Here I'm dipping my hand into the water oil mixture. I'm going to grab a palm full of my dough, and I actually don't measure this. It's just, I don't know, a ball of dough. I'm going to get it into a circle, and I'm going to pinch it with my thumbs and my, my, my fingers to kind of create a disc. And I'm just pinching it and going in a circle and it's actually kind of harder going slow for you guys because it's easier when you go fast. But now I'm doing this like punching and twisting motion to kind of create a well in the middle of my dough. And if your hands get dry, just dunk them back into the water oil mixture. And so now that I've created a, a round disc of masa, I'm going to add some of our filling. And um, I've already made some, but I'm noticing my dough's kind of getting a little dry, so that's why it's cracking. But anyways, here I have my filling, and I'm just going to put that right in the middle. And now you're just going to enclose it with your masa. And sometimes when you enclose it, you end up with extra dough. You can pinch that extra dough and put it back into the bowl. But I think I, I got just the right amount. I'm just going to push in the filling and just cover it with the rest of the masa. Just like that and now I'm just kind of gonna pat it back and forth until I I flatten it and just dip your hands if need be so it doesn't stick to your hands and just back and forth back and forth and if you're doing this for the first time your pupusas might come out crazy they might not be very uniform and if you know to see how the masa kind of opens up and you can see the filling no worries toss it um, on your griddle and it just makes extra crusty deliciousness for your pupusa. Here I'm just dipping my hands and putting more of the oil and I'm going to go ahead and put it on my griddle. I like to hear the sizzle and I also want you to hear all the background noise and this is the main reason when I'm filming I kind of uh, silence all the background noise and I kind of put music and do voiceover because my little one he just talks 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 and talks and talks and talks <laughs> so anyway back to the pupusas I'm just giving it a nice little press and um, let's let me show you again how I form the pupusas uh, I'm, I'm at the last of my dough and when you're doing this you'll notice that the dough does dry out just add you know add water to your hands and kind of work it in there um, the the more practice you get with this, the better off you'll be. But if you're doing this for the first time, don't beat yourself up that the pupusa is not perfect and it's weird looking because you know what? If you follow the recipe, it's going to taste delicious. So here I am again, pinching it with my thumbs and my fingers into a disc and I'm going to do that little punching twist motion to form the well and then I'll just fill it again and you know, you know the process. So, um, and I also want to add that this recipe will make um, a good 18 to 20 uh, small size pupusas. These aren't giant. I'm, I kind of do them to the shape or the size of my, my hand. Um, but yeah, they're about four to five inches in diameter and it made about 20. As always, the recipe will be located in the description box below.
So while the rest of my pupusa has finished cooking, I would like to mention that I have a curtido recipe that goes well with pupusas. And if you wait to the end of the video, you'll be able to click on a video icon and it'll take you directly there. And also salsa goes well with pupusas. And um, I want to show you, um, I actually did just my own version of salsa. It's more of a Mexican salsa. So I don't want to hear comments in the link below about how that's not a Salvadoran salsa. It is not by any means. There are some great ones out there, by the way. And I'm sure you can find them all day long on YouTube. But I just wanted to show you that I'm just boiling some Roma tomatoes, jalapeno, garlic, and onion. And I'll probably add some salts and call it a day. Okay, so pupusa, check. Cortido, check. And now for my salsa on top. And I can't wait to dig in. By the way, when eating pupusas, use your hands. You don't need a fork or a spoon or a knife. Dig in and get some of that cortido and salsa and go to town because guess what? It is delicious. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching. Hey guys, you can click on the video icons for more recipes, or you can click on my picture icon to subscribe. Thanks for watching.